Welcome back to Quantum Yogi Wisdom. In this video, we dive deeper into the story of Buddha and a serial killer Angulimala, understanding its themes of redemption and compassion and how you can apply this to your life for a better living. Gautama was not the only Buddha. There were many before him, many at that time, and many more after him. Buddha is not his name. His name was Gautama Siddhartha. He became a Buddha. The word Bu means booty or the intellect. One who is above his intellect is a Buddha. There is probably no one in the world who has not heard of Gautama's name. While there have been many Buddhas, Gautama's name continues to be remembered. He stands out as one of the greatest spiritual figures and the most successful teacher ever. During his lifetime, he had an impressive following of 40,000 monks who helped spread his teachings far and wide, like a powerful wave of spirituality. Before Gautama, Spirituality was only accessible in Sanskrit, a language limited to a specific group of people. Others were not allowed to learn it because it was considered the language of the divine. However, Gautama changed this by speaking in Pali, the common language of the time. This made spirituality available to everyone, regardless of their background, opening up new opportunities for people to explore their spiritual paths. This story of Buddha and the serial killer Angulimala which I am about to share underscores the capacity of individuals to transcend their darkest deeds and find a path to enlightenment, guided by wisdom and compassion. Angulimala, whose name means Garland of Fingers, was born as a Himsaka, meaning the Harmless One. He had been sent far away to study at the great University of Taxila, near the banks of the Indus River, in what is present-day Pakistan. In those days, Taxila was one of the foremost places of learning in the whole of India, and the young Ahimsaka, who was very clever and well-behaved, excelled at his studies. Despite his auspicious beginnings and a promising future, Ahimsaka's life took a dark turn. Unfortunately, he excelled so much that some of the other students became jealous of him. They felt that he put them all in the shade, and to put a stop to this, they were determined to prevent him from graduating. Organized by their ringleader, a thoroughly lazy student, they went to their teacher in groups of twos or threes, and one after another recounted the same made-up tales of how Ahimsaka's character was so terrible and his behavior so appalling. Initially, the teacher dismissed their stories for the envious smears that they were, but as more and more students related the same concerns, the teacher's mind gradually turned against Ahimsaka. The jealous students had succeeded in their plan, so that as graduation approached, the teacher set Ahimsaka an impossible challenge, one which he knew that the harmless one wouldn't even be able to contemplate fulfilling. The challenge was that Ahimsaka must present the teacher with a gift of a thousand little fingers, each from the right hand of a different person. Ahimsaka initially expressed his frustration to his teacher, arguing that the task was unfair, especially considering his background in a peaceful and law-abiding family. Despite his protests, the teacher remained firm in his demands. This perceived injustice stirred a deep sense of anger and turmoil within Ahimsaka. Feeling obligated to meet the challenge to avoid disappointing his parents, who had sacrificed greatly to send him to university, he began contemplating fulfilling the task, mistakenly believing it would lead to his graduation. He felt a sense of going against something important, deep inside, because he was stepping opposite to what he knew to be right. Initially, the novice bandit aimed to minimize harm, but soon discovered that obtaining a finger without resistance was nearly impossible. Attempting to inflict minimal injury proved challenging and time-consuming, with the added risk of retaliation from his victims. As he grew accustomed to violence as a means to achieve his goals, the transition to outright killing and taking the finger appeared a small step. This gradual transformation marked the completion of his evolution from the harmless one to a violent bandit. Misguided by his respect for his teacher, Ahimsaka transformed into Angulimala, a fearsome bandit who terrorized the countryside. He wore a garland of fingers from his victims around his neck, symbolizing his descent into violence and madness. He went about doing this. He was housed in a jungle, but this was the pathway to go to many other places. People were terrified to go this way. Over a few years, he killed 100 people, he just wanted one more to satisfy his lust. One day, 
Gautama the Buddha came to this town and he was taking a path where Angulimala was active. People said, Do not go this way. This is not a man. This is an animal. This is not someone you can go and give a teaching to or make meditative. Do not go, because he just wants to take your life and we do not want to lose you. Then Gautama said, If I do not go, who will go? And he will remain unfulfilled. He just needs one more finger. Let me go. So he went. Angulamala was sitting on a rock and he saw this monk coming quietly. By now he was enjoying his reputation. People were terrified of him and he liked it. People tremble at just the mention of his name. So sitting there on the rock, he roared just to let this monk know that I am here and this is your end coming. Gothama looked at him and kept walking quietly with a smile on his face. He did not like this. Usually, when they saw him or heard him, people ran helter-skelter wanting to save their lives. He liked that. This man was just walking. He jumped off the rock, came and stood in front of him and said, Who the hell are you? And do you know who I am? He showed his mala, all his fingers. Do you know about me? Gautama said, Well, I have heard a lot about you. What about it? And he kept walking. Where do you think you are going? You are still going when I am talking to you? Gautama said, My going stopped a long time ago. I have arrived. You are the one who is trying to go somewhere. Angulimala laughed and said, You're crazy. I'm standing still, yet you claim I'm moving. You're walking, yet you say you're not. What's wrong with you? Gautama replied, I've been here for a while. I'm not going anywhere. It's you who wants to go somewhere, but you don't know how. Tell me what do you want. Because I'm done, I've arrived. Whether I'm physically present or not doesn't matter. You can do what you want. Buddha continued, I am fulfilled with my life and I am living to fulfill people. You are looking for fulfillment in your own way. If you think you are going to be fulfilled, take my life, because my life is to fulfill people. The Buddha explained that he had ceased all harmful actions and thoughts, having attained enlightenment and liberation from the cycle of birth and death. Angulimala, in contrast, was still trapped in his cycle of violence and suffering. The Buddha's words sent shivers down Angulimala's spine. This revelation shattered Angulimala's delusions. The clarity and compassion in the Buddha's words pierced through the darkness of his mind, igniting a profound change within him. Overcome with remorse and a sincere desire to reform, Angulimala threw down his weapons and sought refuge in the Buddha. The Buddha accepted him as a disciple, giving him the chance to atone for his past misdeeds. Angulimala took to the monastic life with deep commitment, practicing diligently under the Buddha's guidance. Despite the initial hostility he faced from those who had known him as a killer, Angulimala's genuine transformation won the respect and forgiveness of many. The story of Buddha and Angulimala holds profound lessons that are highly relevant in today's world. It serves as a powerful metaphor for how individuals can be manipulated or wrongly programmed by societal influences to commit wrong deeds. In Angulimala's case, his descent into violence was orchestrated by a jealous teacher who exploited his trust and manipulated him into believing that violence was a path to spiritual success. This aspect of the story reflects the ways in which individuals can be misled by societal norms, peer pressure, or authority figures into engaging in harmful behavior. However, the story also offers a message of hope and redemption. Despite Angulimala's past actions, the Buddha's compassionate intervention offered him a path to transformation and enlightenment. This highlights the inherent potential within each individual to change their course and break free from the cycle of violence and wrongdoing. It emphasizes that no matter how deeply entrenched one's negative behaviors may seem, there is always the possibility for redemption and growth. Choosing the path of non-violence, as exemplified by the Buddha and eventually embraced by Angulimala, is depicted as not only morally right, but also personally beneficial. By abandoning violence and embracing compassion and wisdom, Angulimala was able to free himself from the burden of his past actions and find true peace and fulfillment. This illustrates how adopting a stance of non-violence can lead to inner transformation and psychological well-being. Moreover, the story suggests that adopting a mindset of non-violence 
can also be strategically advantageous in navigating the challenges of the physical world. Angulimala's initial reliance on violence as a means to achieve his goals ultimately proved futile and self-destructive. In contrast, the Buddha's unwavering commitment to non-violence and compassion enabled him to triumph over Angulimala's aggression through moral strength and spiritual authority. Psychologically, choosing non-violence can empower individuals to transcend adversities and conflicts in a more constructive and sustainable manner. By cultivating inner peace, resilience, and empathy, individuals can approach challenging situations with clarity and equanimity, thereby increasing their chances of achieving positive outcomes. This approach not only fosters personal growth and well-being, but also contributes to building more harmonious and compassionate communities. In today's world, where conflicts and divisions abound, the story of Buddha and Angulimala serves as a timely reminder of the transformative power of compassion, forgiveness, and nonviolence. It encourages individuals to critically examine the societal influences that shape their beliefs and behaviors and to choose a path guided by wisdom and empathy. By embracing nonviolence as both a moral imperative and a strategic choice, individuals can create a ripple effect of positive change that extends far beyond themselves, ultimately contributing to a more peaceful and just society. Thank you for watching. I hope I helped you with something useful in this video. If you liked the video, please give a thumbs up and let me know in the comments. I'll see you in the next video.